Hi, so yeah, uh, I'm Lily Hoskin, uh, and if you've got any feedback or uh, want to share any of your experiences uh, of this issue, uh, you can yell at me on Twitter. Uh, maybe not yell. Um, so this talk is about uh, improving safety of our users, uh, particularly marginalized users. Uh, so to start off, um, thinking about this, uh, I've got some different categories of software. Um, so uh, you could be building software for everyone. Uh, my uh, example of this is Twitter, uh, because they have a bit of a harassment problem, as you may or may not know. Um, so um, I'm going to talk about some of the things they've been doing, uh, maybe give them some ideas. Um, but so any application that we're building, we want to try and be welcoming uh, for marginalized people. Uh, so we always need to be thinking about user safety. Um, but we might also be making an application specifically for marginalized group. Uh, um, here you're going to have uh, extra challenges because uh, the group might be specifically targeted for harassment. Uh, so the example for this I have is Refunite, uh, which is uh, a tool to help uh, displaced refugees reconnect with their family. And they have a challenge that they need to help uh, people find their uh, friends and family, um, but their users might still be trying to escape uh, from groups who might be trying to target them, so they have to be quite careful with the way that they use uh, their data. Um, we might also want to be uh, building uh, software for a criminalized group. Uh, so the examples I have for this is uh, Ugly Mugs, uh, which is uh, an app to help protect sex workers, uh, which is a criminalized group in some places. Uh, and also uh, Grindr had some issues uh, trying to protect their users in countries where homosexuality is illegal. Um, so I'm going to talk about some different areas of safety, um, but first I'm going to talk about data protection. Uh, so a problem for marginalized people can be um, offline harassment, where people will take data from like stolen data sources, but also public data sources. Um, and they'll use that to collect as much information as they can about somebody, and uh, then they'll use that to make their harassment more effective. Uh, so to try and stop this, we need to be thinking about limiting the data that we're collecting uh, into um, what we really need. So uh, a quote from Refunite, uh, who is the, the refugee displacement platform, uh, well, displaced refugee platform, uh, we strongly believe that the user is the best judge as to the amount of information they share. So um, I think this is a good way to start thinking about data protection. Uh, we want to give the user control of the information they share, uh, tell them the dangers of sharing that information, and also let them update and delete information. And uh, if they can do that, then that's a, that's a good first step. Uh, something Refunite do, which I really like, is they encourage the use of pet names and information that would only be known to close friends and family. So they collect data that will be useful for their application but they uh, avoid collecting excessive data. And so this is best practice to avoid collecting excessive data. Um, so uh, also a problem uh, if you're marginalized online can be harassing messages and comments. Um, and this can uh, get quite scary and it can stop people from sharing their experiences online. Um, and unfortunately, if we want to build applications for marginalized people, Sooner or later, we're going to have to deal with trolls um, because they're everywhere and evil. Uh, and this is really hard if you're, if you're one person or a small team um, because your platform gets popular and you're like, yay, my platform's popular. But then suddenly it gets popular with trolls as well. Um, so this has been a problem for big companies as well, uh, like Twitter again, and also uh, Twitch, uh, which is a gaming streaming service. Uh, so they've built a bit of software uh, called Automod. Uh, the way they've described this is that uh, Automod detects risky messages and holds them for moderator approval before they are sent to chat. Get wrecked, trolls. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so they're using machine learning and uh, automated uh, tools to, uh, to help them moderation. Um, so we can start using this, uh, this kind of technology in our own applications. Uh, this is a perspective project. Uh, it's currently an invite-only beta, but, um, but uh, it looks quite promising. Uh, so what it can do is it can rank comments based on toxicity, 
with the idea uh, of improving conversations online and help people share their opinions without facing harassment. Uh, well, limiting harassment. Uh, so, uh, security. Uh, this is going to be a big issue in, uh, for any application. Um, so, uh, some thoughts about this. Uh, so, two-factor authentication. Uh, you, the user uh, needs two ways to prove they are who they say they are. So, this could be a password and also a, uh, sometimes a text that they'll send to somebody's mobile. Um, and this makes hacking them a lot more difficult. Um, and this can be a problem if, uh, if, you, if uh, hackers are trying to target marginalized people. Uh, so you should support two-factor authentication and also encourage people to set it up. Uh, so WhatsApp uh, uses end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, so they don't need to read the messages in order to deliver them. So they encrypt the data uh, when it's being sent and when it's on their servers. Uh, so this is quite useful, for example, for protecting journalists um, from uh, government snooping. Uh, but it is important to realize that they still know who's talking to who, which in itself can be sensitive information. Um, so if we're ever storing unencrypted data, we need to ask, uh, why do we need this unencrypted data? Uh, so firstly, do you actually need the data? Uh, talking about excessive Inf uh, data earlier, so do you actually need it to achieve your goal? Um, perhaps you could encrypt it, or perhaps uh, you could store it locally on the user's device, because a lot of hacking happens online, uh, so if by avoiding sending the data online and storing it locally, uh, that, can, that can help security. Uh, something else to be aware of is avoid f creating a false sense of security. Um, so if you're particularly if you're building an application for a criminalized group, um, if, you, if you say, oh, this will protect you from government spying, and you don't have a high sense of confidence that it does, then I think that's quite unethical. Uh, you have a duty to protect your users, and you should take that seriously. Um, so, um, yeah, make sh uh, sometimes you might want to do a third-party security audit to make sure that your system is, is safe. Um, but also being aware that no technical solution is flawless. Even if you think it can't be hacked, uh, it probably can be hacked. And also uh, social engineering can be an issue. Uh, this is when people manipulate other people into sharing information that maybe they shouldn't. Uh, so uh, Grindr had this problem. Um, so this is the message that they sent to their users in Egypt. Uh, Egypt is arresting LGBT people, and police may be posing as LGBT on social media to entrap you. Please be careful about arranging meetings with people you don't know, and be careful about posting anything that might reveal your identity. So they saw a risk to their users, and then they warned them about that risk. Uh, I think this is a really good idea, but also if you are warning your users about risk, uh, make sure that your warnings are accessible, uh, particularly uh, if people don't have as much technical knowledge. Don't just assume that they have that knowledge. You need to try and make your warnings accessible. Uh, so how can we start thinking about the needs of our users? Uh, so I think one of the most important things is building a diverse team. Because if people haven't faced these problems, then they won't be thinking about it. Um, so you need to uh, make sure you have a diverse group, a development team, and also testers. Because uh, small decisions can make quite a big difference. For example, uh, Ugly Mugs, uh, which was to help protect sex workers, uh, something it does is it uses a black background to avoid lighting up uh, if people's faces if they're using it at night, uh, which would draw attention to them. So I think this is an example of user-focused design, where they've really thought about the needs of their users um, and got them involved in the development process. Uh, so anything that you do, you should ask, how will this affect the safety of our users? If that's adding a new feature, collecting some data, you want to make it part of your design process to ask about safety. Uh, so uh, yeah, to conclude, so I talked about collecting only the required data, uh, moderating harassment, 
um, particularly automated moderation, uh, considering security, and uh, also making safety part of the design process. Um, so creating safe communities is really difficult because there's a lot of nasty people and people who want you to fail, um, and you can't always get it right. But hopefully by uh, considering the needs of our users, we can improve people's safety. Uh, thank you.